Hey guys, I'm Holly. Welcome back to the YouTube channel, or if you're new, I'm glad you guys found this video. Today I'm telling you how to make running feel easier, basically immediately using hill work. If you're new to hill work, nothing to be scared about. I'm going to give you all the benefits of it right away, and then three workouts to try. These are going to be good for outside and inside. I'll give you treadmill modifications there. If you have any questions, please drop them below. Let's jump in. Now I know many of us can relate to finding ourselves on inclines, hills, sets of stairs when we didn't want to be there. Hiking up your stairs to your apartment at the end of a long day. Going up the hill to catch a bus. Going up a bunch of stairs, maybe at a museum or some special site when you're on vacation. Either way, we've all been huffing and puffing and we didn't plan to be. The difference with hill work is that we are planning it out. We are warming up properly. We have form here. We're going to know how to breathe. And the best part is we're going to use it in repetitive the difference with hill work is that we are planning to do it. We are warming up properly. We're going to use good form, good breathing technique to do it and get through it to the best of our abilities. And we're going to watch it pay off in our flat running almost immediately. Going up those hills makes us appreciate the flats. It makes us run faster on the flats. And ultimately, it makes us stronger as runners. One of the first reasons I love hill work is that it builds up our glutes and hamstrings. When those are strong, we take a lot of load off the lower leg. If you're someone who deals with shin splints, Achilles tendonitis, maybe a lot of calf pain or calf strain, you are probably not getting the full benefit of the backs of the legs, that posterior chain, especially around the hips. We get that from the hill work. It's basically like doing a back squat. When we add this in, our flat running becomes a lot more resilient. We can last longer in really good form. We can remember how we need to keep our hips forward at any time when we're running. The next reason I love hill work is of course it gets the heart rate up in a way that flat running, unless running fast, does not. So when we're going up that hill and working on going against that incline, think of it as extra resistance against you, it is going to be tougher. We're gonna learn how to breathe nice and deep through the nose, figuring out how to address this higher heart rate. The more we do that and we practice it in small increments, we can then raise our overall aerobic baseline, making it again easier to breathe at maybe our medium speed on the flat run. And to build off of that one, guys, hill work forces us to run well all the time. Over and over, those hill repeats, it basically is impossible to do it with shitty running form because you're going to be in pain. So we get those immediate pieces of feedback that teach us right away how to run better. Shoulders get tense, low back starts to flare up and hurt, calves are screaming. Those things all tell us, okay, we're not doing things correctly. And then we can bring that form down to our flat running, once again, making it easier. Workout number one is a fabulous intro to hill work. We've got 12 rounds of 30 seconds up the hill with a two minute rest between rounds. That includes the descent. I'm gonna say that again, 12 rounds. We're going up for 30 seconds. You come back down the hill and whatever you have remaining of your two minutes in the rest, you stay down there, you grab water and relax till you go up again. Now, just that framework alone is a little too boring to keep you interested. So we are gonna be switching up effort levels throughout the rounds, starting with a six out of 10 effort for your first 30 second run, going to eight out of 10 and then 10 out of 10 all out. The difference here, guys, for all of us is that my six out of 10 is not your six out of 10, is not someone else's six out of 10, especially given the day that you're doing the workout. For example, if I'm coming off a long run on a Sunday and I'm gonna do my hill work on a Monday, my six out of 10 is probably gonna be slower than if I had completely rested the day before. This goes for you doing it three months from now as well. You have to keep readdressing what your effort level is that day when you're doing the workout. For my beginners, your six out of 10 is probably gonna be a moderate hike up the hill. You are not in the run speed yet. For someone more advanced, you're running five miles, six miles at a time, easy, you're fine you are gonna be running a little faster than a jog. So on my scale, one out of 10 is the slowest turtle crawl you can think of. Five out of 10 is gonna be that very easy recovery jog. Six out of 10, we're just bumping it up a hair. All of us, when we're running, when we're hiking, everything, we're gonna be using the same technique. Kissing those heels to the ground, that means not staying up on the toes. If you're feeling your calves scream, it probably means you're not letting the heels kiss the ground every time they land. We're all gonna keep our hips forward, pushing into the incline of the hill, not too aggressively, but just thinking about it will usually do the trick. We're all gonna keep our shoulders relaxed and we're gonna focus on deep breaths whenever we can catch it. So big inhale, exhale through the mouth. And especially on that six out of 10, it's a great place to practice this. So we all go up for our six out of 10. 
come back down, we recover. We then go up for eight out of 10. So for my beginners, somebody who's never done hill work before, ever really run up an incline, your eight out of 10 will probably be your best attempt at a jog up the hill, some sort of a non-walk. And that will be your attempt there for that eight out of 10. For somebody who is experienced, like I said, running, running miles at a time without taking a break, your at eight out of 10 is gonna be a strong run. Really pumping those elbows behind you, big arm swing here, again, focus on everything else we talked about, but you're running up the hill. Then we come back down, we rest. We then go up for 10 out of 10. This is everything you've got. So again, if you're a beginner, this could mean a little bit faster than that jog. It could just be the first time that you can attempt to run up the hill. Maybe you're mixing up five steps walking, five steps fast run, five steps walking, you're kind of mixing it up, whatever you can do. We're all going off of heart rate and effort, how it feels to us. This should feel like the hardest out of everything so far. Obviously 10 out of 10 for more experienced people, full on sprint, everything you've got, really push it. Everybody should be really tired at the top of that 30 seconds. We come down and recover. Then we go back to our six. As the workout continues, keep modifying and making sure that your six out of 10 is appropriate to how you're feeling then. This can get a little hairy. We get a little too complicated sometimes. You start to think, oh my gosh, well, now I'm a little bit more warmed up, so maybe I can move a little bit quicker for my six out of 10. Don't overthink it here. Try to stay consistent. The point is we're working in different modes to force ourselves to create those up a hill. Final important detail of this workout is that you will need a hill that's runnable, of course five to 8% gradient, if you can picture that in your head. Otherwise, if you're on the treadmill, set it to 6.0 incline for all of your repeats. If you're on the treadmill, your recoveries will be down on 0.0, .0 incline, and you will either walk or jog or kind of do a combo of the two as you recover, and then you can full stop there in the two minutes as well to fully catch the breath. But if you're on the hill, you're gonna just kind of descend at whatever feels comfortable to you, and again, recover at the bottom, catching your breath, getting ready for that next round. Workout number two hits very close to home for me. One of the biggest mistakes I made early on in my racing career, if you wanna call it, was not practicing hiking up a hill. So I had no go-to speed for my hiking on an incline. And this really bit me in the ass when it came to hill races, anything in the mountains, trails, even if it wasn't a long race. I just thought in my head, if I'm not running, oh, I just walk and I don't have to practice walking. Everybody knows how to do that. But the reality is you get slowed way down in your overall pace if you don't practice urgency in your uphill hiking. So that is what we're gonna talk about today. And that's what we're gonna build, nice hill endurance in this workout. For you guys on the treadmill in this one, I want you guys to do all repeats at 5.0 incline. For anyone outside, I want you guys to find something similar to that hill for the first workout, but maybe on the less steep side, something a bit more manageable, not so steep. Whatever you've got though, and ideally if you're outside, it's gotta be a long hill because we will be going up for much longer than 30 seconds this time. The layout of this workout is quite simple. We've got six rounds total, but we're alternating each round. Round one, you guys are going for a three minute power hike up the hill. For my beginners, you're just trying to stay moving all the way up through the three minutes working on that breathing, going as slow as you need to. For people more advanced, we're working on a really strong push up that hill, really driving those elbows back, hiking with urgency as if we're trying to beat someone up the hill, but we're not running. We get to the top of that hill, we jog down, and then we rest another minute at the bottom. If you guys are on the treadmill, what you're gonna do is bring it down to a 0.0, .0 incline, find a very light jog. If you're a very beginner, you can just find a walk here on that flat for two minutes, we jog, and then one full minute of rest. That is the odd rounds. And then for our even rounds, rounds two, four, and six, we are taking this thing up to a run, but just for one minute. So we're gonna go six out of 10 effort on this run for the minute. More advanced, of course, this is gonna be a hair faster than a jog. More beginner, this might not be a run at all, maybe just a faster power hike or a combo of jog, hike, jog, hike. We're only going for that minute, and we're thinking when we get to the top that we could go another two minutes if we had to. We're building the endurance of our running on the incline. That's the whole point of this one. When we get to the top, we descend. Again, we rest one more minute at the bottom before going back up for our next power hike. What I like about this workout is that by comparison, one minute of a run is a lot less than three minutes that we're on the hike for. So it really makes it feel like less and it gets us thinking, okay, 
if I had to run for longer on this hill, could I? And what do I need to do to make that happen? So again, we're thinking about form and the breathing, et cetera. If you guys are on the treadmill, make sure on those uh, jog recoveries or the walk recoveries, you're bringing it down to that flat 0.0, .0 incline. And you are again, resting the one minute when you're at the bottom. So full rest, get the water, et cetera. Again, it'll all be written. That is workout number two. I think it will largely pay off in a lot of your guys' races, especially up in the mountains, trails, et cetera, getting you feeling comfortable moving for longer uphill and finding your different modes there. Workout number three has a lot more detail to it, which I actually feel like makes it go by quicker because the more focused we are on what we're doing, the less focused we are on how bad it hurts. Part one of this workout, four by two minutes up the hill. In this workout, I want you guys on something steeper than what we've been on in the first two workouts. Six to eight percent gradient, something steep, still runnable, but spicy at the top. If you're on the treadmill, 6.0 to 8.0 incline, pick your poison there. What we're doing is splitting these repeats into a hike and a run. Hike the first minute, nice strong power hike, and you go straight into a run at seven out of 10 effort. We're building on that endurance speed we did in the second workout. We were at that six out of 10 here. Now we're going a little bit faster. Think dictionary definition of run, like that 10K speed if you're more advanced or comfortable in your running. If you're a beginner, you'll do nice, easy walk for that first minute, take it to a nice, strong power hike, maybe a little bit of jogging built in there for your second minute. So we go hike right into run. We come back down the hill. As soon as you guys are back down the hill, you start again, because technically we go back into a hike and not a run. So I'm taking that rest out and we're going right back up. If you guys are on the treadmill, what I want you to do is from that top of the two minutes, you're at the end there, I want you guys to just bring it down to that 0.0, .0 incline, light, light, easy jog for about a minute, maybe just to a walk if you're more beginner, and then you guys go again. So about a minute rest there if you're on the treadmill. Otherwise outside, as soon as you get back down to the bottom, you're going straight back up. This is a nice split, and it has you working between your different modes. It also gets you enjoying the power hikes because it kind of builds on the extra rest there. So learning how to breathe in those two modes for that. Part two, six by 15 seconds, all out everything you've got up the hill. If you're on the treadmill, I want you guys setting to 8.0 incline, so that steeper end there, no matter if you're beginner or advanced. 15 seconds, everything you've got. Breathe, use that form I talked about, Drive those elbows back, keep the shoulders relaxed. It might feel like it's gonna help to stay tense, it's not. Keep the core engaged lightly, just drawing the belly button in a little bit and pushing it, everything you've got, just 15 seconds up the hill. Your recovery is completely up to you on this second part. However long it takes to bring that heart rate down, calm yourself, and then go up again when you're ready. I find that kind of challenges us to go a little sooner than we want to. In a lot of ways, we kind of feel ready and then we're like, oh shoot, maybe I wasn't. You know, it just helps you plan a little bit better based on how you feel. And if you're on the treadmill, guys, what I recommend for safety purposes, at the 15 second top mark, you've pushed up the speed. You might actually want to give yourself a little extra time to build into the 15 seconds. Start to bring the incline down for your recovery before the speed. That will help you get your footing, you know, safely. And then you can bring that speed down to recover. So. If you need a little bit of time, maybe take it up to a run and then start the 15 seconds when you're up in that sprint and then you bring it back down on incline and then the speed. Hopefully that makes sense for you. If you're outside, bulldoze up there, get up the 15 seconds, recover, come down, you got six rounds there. That'll do it for our three workouts today, guys. If you can include at least one of these into your routine each week, you are gonna notice a big change in your running. Your flat running is going to feel easier. If you're doing any races coming up with incline, elevation gain, you're going to be up at altitude. This is going to give you that practice, make you feel more confident on the hills to keep that pace up. And overall, this is going to raise that aerobic baseline so that you feel more athletic. Remember to keep that good form and remember to warm up and cool down properly with these hills, guys. Calves for sure, low back stretches, outer glutes, quads, everything. Make sure you hit those even just a couple minutes before and after. You will be glad you did. And if you guys have any requests for future workouts, videos, anything I can do for you, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys soon. Bye.